If you're a Windows CE developer, like I used to be, uh, you'll be super stoked to hear what Deepu Thomas from the uh, Core OS IoT team has to tell us, because now there's a way to run your Windows CE application binary on a modern OS like Windows IoT Core. Don't miss that IoT Show episode. Hi everyone, this is the IoT Show. I'm Olivier, your host. Thanks for watching. Today we have Deepu from the Core OS IoT team. Uh, Deepu, thanks for joining Thank uh, the show today. Thanks for Can having me. Can you introduce, before we jump into the topic, which is uh, something that's going to interest a lot, uh, Windows CE developers and everyone else doing IoT, by the way. But um, can you introduce yourself real quick to our audience and what the Core OS IoT team does? Hi, um, my name is Deepu Thomas, and I'm the development manager for the Core OS IoT team. And in the OS team, our fun fundamental function with IoT is to make sure that the operating systems are enabled to connect to our cloud um, assets in Microsoft. And so how do we enable these operating systems to have the right parameters to be able to connect to Azure in a secure, modern way is the primary goal of our uh, development efforts. Okay. So one of the words that I caught in your uh, introduction here is modern. So um, we had lots of like solutions for developing embedded device back in the time. Yep. Uh, one of them called Windows CE. Yep. Uh, and Windows CE has been deprecated some time ago, uh, but still people are using it because the industry of embedded actually is about devices that sometimes live like 10, 20, 30 years. Yep. Um, so you guys came up and were announcing that with a way for developers to modernize their Windows CE um, devices, yep. right? Tell me a bit more about that. Yeah, so one thing that we recognized when we looked at the customers that are still running Windows CE mm -hmm. is that we have a large ecosystem of people who have developed uh, Windows CE applications and they would like to modernize it and move into an operating system like Windows 10. Okay. But many of those code bases are not readily modifiable. Yeah. And so people wanted to lift and shift them and mm -hmm. modernize them and then connect the cloud assets to those applications. So the value of things like the IoT Hub, the Azure IoT Edge runtime, these mm -hmm. are all apparent to these developers, okay. but it's not easy for them to use all of that with their current investments that they've done in CE. Okay. So what we wanted to do was to leverage their code assets without modifications and then connect the value of the rest of the work on the host operating system like Windows 10 IoT Core, okay. and then see whether we could mix and match them into using them in a more powerful manner. Okay, so what are the typical patterns of transition from like what was used yep. like some time ago and what is used today? So let's look at a typical uh, operating system developer here, right? I mean, they were either using 7 or 8.1 or some operating system like Windows XP, okay. and they have a very easy path to migrate to Windows 10. Okay, Windows, Windows, yes. right. But for a much more constrained device mm -hmm. developer, mm -hmm. like that we're using CE, mm -hmm. yeah. which is our operating system offer for the more constrained memory and storage requirements that these embedded applications yeah. have. And th for those who are not familiar with uh, Windows CE, um, despite the name Windows, yeah. Um, Windows CE was not developed on the same OS, core OS, as, as big Windows. Many of the constructs in the operating system have evolved since yes. CE. Mm -hmm. And so it's not um, exactly apples to apples between Windows CE and Windows 10 IoT Core. Okay. Which is why we think that we have now an offering that makes it easier for people to migrate their content over. Okay. Okay. So now we have that path and yep. we're going to describe that, yep. um, which is called the CE PAL. Yep. So the genesis of some of this work starts with something we call Pico process. Okay. And Pico process is a construct that we introduced in Windows 8.1. Okay. And the reason why we did that is because we wanted to introduce the notion of multiple subsystems in the operating system mm -hmm. that can use the Windows NT kernel without the kernel actually prescribing how the user mode canvas should look like in the user mode layer. Kind of abstracting the, the kernel The user itself. mode pieces yeah. from the kernel, right? Okay. Because if you look at a typical Win32 application, the application has a lot of tentacles to the NT kernel in terms of how is the process initialized. Yep. So when we did work on the Windows subsystem for Linux mm -hmm. and for other projects that use Pico process like okay. the SQL PAL, okay. they needed a blank canvas on which they wanted to put the right ingredients mm -hmm. to make the subsystem work. Okay. 
So we are leveraging that technology for the CE PAL because we believe that we can lift the entire C user mode and the mm -hmm. C kernel and run it inside a Pico process. Okay. And then have the NT kernel satisfy the requirements from a scheduling, storage, and memory management perspective. Okay. So if you look at this picture right here, mm -hmm. you have the C applications that are unmodified. Okay, unmodified, binary. Binary unmodified. Okay. Right? So we are not asking any of our partners to make any changes to their CE application. Okay. Because in many of their examples, they had an ecosystem of third-party plugins yeah, yeah. and other code bases that they have no longer the capability to go modify. Okay. And then, if you take that user mode and kernel mode, we have this virtual split between them that mm -hmm. we call yeah, the yeah. virtual user mm -hmm. mode and the virtual kernel mode. All satisfied with the platform abstraction layer at the bottom yeah. that then translates those calls into NT system calls. Okay. So because this is a very native translation, mm -hmm. the performance of it is fairly adequate for most users because we are not adding a bunch of code in between their existing application yeah, yeah. and the underlying NT operating system. Yeah. And, and as a matter of fact, the device that's going to run that yeah, anyways I'm, is a bigger one, bigger CPU, more memory. Yeah. So anyways, where you were running that C application on very restrained resources, yeah. here you have a bit more resources anyways, right? True, but we don't want to take uh, advantage of the fact that we want to uh, provide more than the necessary layers Fair between enough. their application code and NT and okay. leave the remaining resources for the application layer to take yes. advantage for modern yep. applications, yep. right? So if you look at this picture, one of the th key goals that we achieved was no modification to the CE process. Okay. Yep. Running it in a sandbox inside the Pico process yeah. so that by uh, definition of that Pico process, you are now sandboxed inside that, and all of your code is kind of native to that. Security in that sandbox. Yes. Okay, got it. And yeah. the last one is you are now running on a modern socket like Windows 10 IoT Core, mm -hmm. which actually have capabilities to update like the update services that we provide to Windows 10 IoT Core. Okay. So now, not only are you running on a modern socket, but you're running it in a secure and in an updatable manner that our customers actually want. Makes so sense. now you bring the advantages of Windows 10. Yeah. yeah. And you take the existing code base without modification, mm -hmm. we believe that creates a powerful paradigm for people to take a bet yeah. on moving forward. I'm just now starting thinking about my old Windows CE demos yeah. and bringing them on top of that. Yeah. We'll see, we'll see. So if you look at this uh, block diagram right here, okay. you can see that we have exploded the virtual user mode and the virtual kernel mode. Okay. And so think about the application largely running in the virtual user mode. Mm -hmm and the kernel mode being enlightened to talk to the platform abstraction layer okay. so that we had to make some small changes to the C kernel that Microsoft owns to talk in a more efficient manner to the NT kernel. Okay. And because of these modifications, now many of these calls are much more faster to work on NT than actually having to byte by byte translate them like you do in a virtual machine. Makes right? sense. So because this is running native, you don't mm -hmm. have to pay the overhead of you doing any kind of emulation in between. Love it. Yeah. Uh, and I can see some of these familiar, you know, DLLs and, and so on. Yeah. Uh, before we send people to that private preview link, yeah. can we actually see a demo of Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Awesome. So what I'm going to demonstrate today is actually a IoT enterprise machine okay. that is actually running the CE applications. Okay. Um, so I'm going to launch the C operating system ASUS. Okay. So this is the boot process that uh, people are familiar in booting okay. up CE. Yeah. And then you get into something very familiar for people, which is the actual CE6 shell experience, okay. right? Yes. Um, Memories. <laughs> exactly. And so this is the start menu that we all love from CE6 era. Yep. And, uh, At least from the developer standpoint, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And so we have been able to, none of this code bases had to be modified because they are all being emulated on our platform abstraction layer. Okay. And uh, so I want to demonstrate three basic applications mm -hmm. to you. And these were applications that we got from our partners and we didn't have to modify any okay. of these applications. So one of them is um, a reg registry editor that one of our partners developed mm -hmm. because there was no native registry editor on CE. You can do a remote registry editing, yes. but not, but not, not on the an device. application like what yeah, we are yeah. familiar with Windows. Mm -hmm. And once again, for those who are not familiar with Windows CE, working with the registry 
you know, especially as a developer, is kind of key yeah. uh, for your application. And so yeah. these are familiar constructs wherein what we do is every registry call mm -hmm. that you now make in CE yeah. is translated down to the actual NT call at the bottom. Okay. And so anything that people are familiar with, now you can actually edit them much like you do at the capability levels that people okay. have. Which actually means that in many cases, you know, you don't have to constrain yourself on the storage, the registry APIs, mm -hmm. they all mm -hmm. natively work for you. Okay. Um, the other application that I wanted to demonstrate was something that showed the power of the input and the output. So, so basically interacting with hardware uh, peripherals, right? Exactly. Okay. So think about the mouse is actually a driver that is available on the host operating system. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But we are transmitting those interrupts mm -hmm. through the X and Y coordinates okay. to the CE platform abstraction layer. So which then projects it back to the user mode in the CE layer. Got it. So basically like you have the, the HID interface, which is your actual mouse. Yeah and on Windows host, yep. right, and goes into CE through the CE PAL. That's right. W what are the various like types of uh, peripherals or drivers that you can access to? So we are uh, doing a streams interface for these drivers. Okay. So th things like if you want to ioctal into a device driver, mm -hmm. you now have the same access from CE that you used to have in the past. Okay. But the underlying driver is a host driver on NT. Yeah. So if you have a board that actually boots IoT core, mm -hmm. now you project those devices onto CE and use the same APIs. Okay. For one of our partners wanted to get printing working on CE, yeah, yeah. but they were very constrained in the kind of printers that were supported on CE. Mm -hmm. Thanks to the power of Windows 10, now they can print on any printer that is supported with Windows 10 because we abstract it at the print API well, okay. boundary. Yeah. And all the C applications that just call the normal C print APIs yeah. now take advantage of all the new printers that Got exist it. with Windows 10. Got it. And so now they don't have to go to eBay to find uh, drivers yeah. and you know printers that work on CE. I, I like that. Yep. And here what you're demoing is fun because I remember when we were first demoing, hey, touch yep. with Windows CE. It yep. was like fantastic to be able to draw a line. Yep. And now again, years later, that same demo becomes cool again because you can do that running yep. that CE app yep. in on top of the CE pile. Yep. I love that. The last one that I wanted to show you was a .NET Compact Framework application. This is from like a different era. People will be happy. Yeah, but still, like, once again, people are still like leveraging IP that's been developed on top. Yeah, absolutely. Of Compact Framework, yes. And so this is a Excel uh, Lite application that yeah. was developed by one of our partners. And uh, the value here is that we didn't have to touch this application or learn about this application at mm -hmm. all because we are emulating it at the NT kernel boundary. And so this is okay. a very powerful paradigm for people to move forward yeah. because we truly believe that they can reuse most of their investments yes. and then modernize their workloads and actually take advantage of all the richness that Azure IoT and Microsoft is bringing into the OS ecosystem by connecting these devices to the cloud and then building a very powerful pattern through that experience. I love that. So you guys are announcing that uh, right now. Yep. Um, and there's a way for people to sign up for that private preview, right? Yep. So we want to encourage partners to come to Microsoft and yep. then you know we want to work with you to see okay. how do we migrate your workloads over okay. and then build the next uh, generation of devices together mm -hmm. but leveraging your assets that you built for Windows CE but on modern sockets like Windows 10 IoT Core. Awesome. So that thanks a lot, Deepu. Actually, that's a great insight into that new feature. I love it. Yeah. Uh, for you guys who are uh, Windows CE developers, uh, well, you know what you have to do? Go check out the private preview. Uh, if you're a hardcore .NET Compact Framework developers, uh, like Chris Tacky, uh, just to mention you, uh, you might actually be super interested into that. Uh, thanks for watching the IT show. Thanks, Deepu, for showing us uh, the CPAL, and I hope to see you soon for more. Thank you for having me. Thank you, guys. Thank you.